Hi everyone and welcome back to MediBrain. Today's topic is Hashimoto thyroiditis, so let's dive in. Back in 1912, Hakaru Hashimoto was the first person who described an autoimmune process of the thyroid gland, leading to its inflammation and destruction and gave the disease its name Hashimoto thyroiditis. Although the exact pathophysiology remains unclear, the theory says that Hashimoto thyroiditis is associated with a mutation of the human leukocyte antigen genes on chromosome 6, in specific HLA DR3 and 5, which are specific alleles of class 2 major histocompatibility complex. MHC2 molecules of follicular cells normally present the host protein, also called self-antigen, to immune cells, to differ between own cells and foreign invaders. But in case of Hashimoto thyroiditis, self-antigens are mimicking foreign proteins, called molecular mimicry. So self-antigens are turned into autoantigens, which confuses antigen-presenting cells. Eh? Antigen-presenting cells pick up the autoantigen, carry it to the nearby lymph node and present it to the CD4-positive T-helper cells. T helper cells stimulate B cells to start proliferating and to differentiate into plasma cells which produce autoantibodies against autoantigens. The autoantibodies, including plasma and T helper cells, enter the circulation and reach the thyroid gland. There are different targets of the autoantibodies. Number one is the enzyme thyroid peroxidase. It is responsible for two processes iodination and coupling to synthesize the thyroid hormones. Number two is thyroglobulin. It acts as a substrate for the synthesis of thyroid hormones. The third target is the TSH receptor. TSH acts through the TSH receptor and is the major stimulator of thyroid cell growth, differentiation and function. By that they block the targets and get in the way of normal thyroid function. The tagged follicular cells and the cytokines from CD4 positive T helper cells attract CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells as well as natural killer cells which start destroying them. As the first cells are destroyed, T3 and T4 are spilled into the bloodstream, causing transient hyperthyroidism, also called Hashitoxicosis. The spillage of T3 and T4 into the bloodstream and the subsequent transient hyperthyroidism or Hashitoxicosis caused through negative feedback and inhibition of TSH secretion from the anterior pituitary. After some time, the pituitary gland produces more amounts of TSH for the remaining thyroid tissue to normalize T3 and T4 levels. This stage is called subclinical hypothyroidism. Overt hypothyroidism is the last stage where high levels of TSH are not able to reach normal T3 and T4 levels, which is the consequence of the destruction of most of the follicular cells that makes T3 and T4 not available anymore. Symptoms depend on the stage of the disease. With transient hyperthyroidism or Hashitoxicosis, goiter, tachycardia, palpitations, warm moist skin, tremor, heat intolerance, weight loss diarrhea and more can be seen. With overt hypothyroidism, fatigue, depressed mood, goiter, bradycardia, cold dry skin, cold intolerance, weight gain constipation, secondary amenorrhea, erectile dysfunction and more can be examined. How is Hashimoto thyroiditis diagnosed? Well, it can be a clinical diagnosis if the hypothyroidism is overt with the following typical features. Pale skin, reduced facial expressions, duffy eyelids, impression of immense tiredness, mm. macroglossia, and a deep-seated root of the nose. In addition, thyroid hormones can be measured, which correspond to the third stage. In the transient hyperthyroid stage, TSH is low and T3, T4 is high. In the subclinical hyperthyroid stage, TSH is high and T3, T4 is normal. And in the overt hypothyroid stage, TSH is high and T3, T4 is low. Antibody detection is another reliable diagnostic tool. As already mentioned, antithyroid peroxidase, antithyroglobulin and TSH receptor antibodies can be measured. If they are positive, 
Other endocrinopathies should be considered, for example diabetes mellitus or Addison's disease, as these may be associated with autoimmune hypothyroidism. An ultrasound can also be done to assess thyroid size or to exclude thyroid malignancies. If the thyroid size is reduced, which is mainly observed, we speak about an atrophic phenotype. If a heterogeneous enlargement is found, it's called a goitrous phenotype. Last but not least, a fine needle aspiration may be done to exclude malignancies or a lymphoma. Hashimoto thyroiditis is treated with lifelong oral administration of levothyroxine, also called L-thyroxine, which is T4. Initially, 25 to 50 microgram per day per os are given. The dosage is increased all 2 to 4 weeks by 25 to 50 microgram per day until a dosage of 100 to 200 microgram per day is reached. Pills are always given in the morning with an empty stomach. The aim of the whole therapy is to get TSH to a lower normal range, but never suppressed. Elderly people are often hypersensitive and require a lower dosage. Elderly patients and people with heart disease start with 12.5 to 25 microgram per day and increase by this amount at intervals of 1 to 2 weeks over a period of 2 to 3 months until the final dose of 100 to 150 microgram per day is reached. If the increase is too rapid, it can lead to anginal symptoms, arrhythmias or myocardial infarction. Lifelong monitoring by a general practitioner is helpful due to a decline in T4 production with increasing age, to adjust the treatment and to avoid a hypothyroidism. A complication could be the mixed edema crisis or coma, which is the most severe and even a life-threatening form of hypothyroidism. Some authors prefer the term mixed edema crisis, as patients typically present with altered mental status and only progress to coma if left untreated. Typical symptoms are mixed edematous facial appearance, which includes puffiness and swelling, ptosis, periorbital edema and macroglossia, as well as bradycardia, hypotension, hypothermia, hypoventilation and an impaired mental status plus an increase in constipation. Therapy of mixed edema crisis or coma comprises a high dosage of L-thyroxine with 500 micrograms per 24 hours and from the second day 100 micrograms per 24 hours which is both administered intravenously. On top, liothyronine synthetical T3 can be given. In addition, glucocorticoids in form of hydrocortisone are required with a dosage of 100 to 200 milligrams per day. If it's necessary, intubation and ventilation, infusions of plasma expanders, glucose and electrolytes can be done. Hypothermia improves with thyroid hormone substitution, so further warming measures are not needed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support me, Please like and subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Till the next time.